Hi and thank you for watching. Um, this is a, a quick how-to video and it's to service and maintain your evaco system. Uh, brief overview, so obtain your um, your building owner's key from the responsible person. Um, that will get you access to your um, EACIE enclosure, your security enclosure. Once we've gained access, um, we open the enclosure up. Controls for service and maintenance use only. We open the enclosure up. Um, what we do, um, we're going to get it ready for for tests, ready to do the, the walk test for service and maintenance. So we take our, our PC and we plug our PC in and we will launch up our virtual terminal. So the virtual terminal we can use for, for test. We launch our MX terminal program and what we do is press the, the menu button so you can see normal panel operation if you're unsure just click on the status hopefully it should be fault free otherwise it will be giving you a fault on your control equipment so panel is normal operation press the menu button and fairly straightforward so we loaded the config file in that's okay we can toggle the switch the switch will activate the, the floor of origin but there's a, another tool which we have is we go into the test menu and we select outputs Put in your password, just making sure you are authorised, so put in your 7654 and press the tick button, okay, and you can see your, your different zones, so we've got zones 1, 2, 3, uh, ground floor, scroll to the right hand side of the ground floor, as an example, there's the apartment, apartment 4, press the tick button and that will test the sound out, okay, so you can hear that operating in the background. Scroll off the device will immediately take the, the device out of test. So depending on how many flats you have on your evacuation alert area will depend on how many devices you have. So scroll down onto your, your next zone or your next floor, first floor. Scroll to the right hand side and you can see I've got flat apartment 106. Press the tick button, test the device. Yeah, and you can hear the sounder. Obviously if that sounder was to, to go into fault, then it will give you a fault indication. Once you're happy with the test menu, go through all, every sounder should be tested, so go through every single evacuation zone, testing each sounder, and don't also forget to, to test the, the toggle switch for, for activation for the floor. Um, other menu functions, so say it's just like your fire alarm control panel, go into your tools menu, commission, put in your password, 7654, and again, to add and remove devices, simply navigating through this menu structure. You'll notice with the cursor key, if I press number one, it will take me straight to my loops. Number two will take me straight to my zone. So an example of press number two, the shortcuts. Okay, so I can change the zone text. Put in the text that you see fit or if you want to change. Okay, the more information you've got into the system, the better. But if I press number one, or I can just navigate, press number one, goes into loops. Number one again, loop one. Okay, or I can just use my navigational keys. Useful tool is the meter menu. You can see the voltage out and the return voltage. Pretty, pretty healthy. So if you want to add a device, then you re-auto learn the system, adding the device. You can view and edit devices. Same as just having an LCD display. So you've got all these different sounders, devices that you, you can configure. Scroll to the right hand side, assign it to a zone and put in the appropriate text. And then what you've also got is your output groups, remember. So we've been going through the, the menu structures, carrying out the test. Obviously, one of your, your colleagues would be walking as part of the code of practice, is telling you to, to listen to the sounder from outside of the, of the flat. Um, so we're turning on the sounders from the PC tool, your, your, your colleagues listening to the sounders, making sure they operate. So what we now do is we would recommend is you use our service tool. Our service tool allows you, simple and easy to, to use is to extract the data from the panel provide customized reports and you can rebrand the reports as, you, as your own and you, you can obviously hand that over to the client put it in your document box um, whatever it is that you you need to do with that report um, pass it to you pass it to or store it on a on a server somewhere so we'll keep a backup uh, of the system so we download using the service tool and we'll, we'll show you how the how the service tool works
Okay, so we've we plugged our PC into the evacuation system. So this tool, the service tool, again, it's available to download from Advanced 360 section of our website. It'll allow you to provide some some pretty cool, um, quite easy to use, customizable reports to, to prove that your your, your compliance uh, and to, to prove that the, the system's being tested. So all we do is we plug into the control panel and what we do is we click this download button so it's pretty pretty simple to use just click download when you click download you'll see obviously bottom right hand side there it is downloading so there's quite a healthy database built into this evacuation system this tells you when devices were, were last installed when they were last tested um, gives you a general event log allows you to check um, some data analytics such as the the analog value make sure the the device is reporting healthy it also allows you to to generate some filters to to categorize them and add them to to show you your compliance so you can put in short circuit tests carried out flat wasn't occupied whatever type of categories you or filters you want to generate this is what we do as part of this process Okay, so our download is complete. You're, you're then presented with a, a node number, devices, log, and history. Uh, so a brief overview. So we can see the, the node zero. This is our EACIE control panel. Uh, it's a 32 zone evacuation panel that I've, I've extracted my data from. You can see the product type, MX5000V5347. That's actual firmware that's embedded into the control panel. And you can see the timestamp when this download was was completed. So what we do, I am viewing by node number, so this is a node of the of the control panel. Click the plus sign and this is the, the actual EACIE control equipment. And what you can see, the, the battery voltage, 27 volts, happy with that. You can see the charger voltage, I've got no earth faults present on the system. And it gives you a, a generic summary. So we can view by node number, we can view by zone or by device type. So to give you an example by zone, you can see zone one could be the ground floor, first floor, second floor, and so on. But if I expand those zones, you can see the sounders, flat 801 and flat 802. They are normal operation and they are enabled onto the system. So we can see all the different devices on the circuits. Quick and easy way to, to filter and to, and to view and identify which, which flat location. But I'm gonna stick with the, the node number. So we expand the node itself. We, we navigate through this program. You can see the, the battery circuits and so on. If we scroll down, what you can see, uh, we've got flats 101, uh, 201, 202, 404. So these are the different sounders, beacons or VADs that we, we've got on the system. And to give you a typical example, you can see the zone number they're assigned to, the, the loop they're assigned to, and obviously the address that they're using on the system. So basically we have a loop of sounders that are, are connected to the EACIE control panel. Now the, the key point being, um, you can identify the devices with the, the relevant uh, description. So in the event of anything occurring within that flat, you have the appropriate text notification. What we can see, you can see all the devices are enabled, but the, the, one of the key points here is the category assignment. So we can assign categories which will help you with your service and maintenance. But I'm going to come to this a bit later on. So you can see all your devices, you can see they're all enabled, everything's everything's happy. So we look at the, the logs, you can see the log, you can see obviously the time and date reference, you can see, oh, I've got devices going missing, but it's just a typical event log from some testing. You can scroll through, you can see I've had open circuit conditions, I've had device faults from, from the loop in particular areas. You've got a timestamp reference, you can see me toggling the the EACIE uh, firefighters switch. So we're, we're generating an alarm on the system, which is basically turning on our sounders on the on the floor of origin. So it's a general vent log that we have. So we've got activity, we can see what's going on. One of the key points to this service tool is the history. So this history gives you some quite valuable information. So you can see, first of all, when the panel was created, you can see when all the devices were added onto the system. So you can see, if I look at my loop, look at loop one, device one, you can see when the device was installed, when it was added on the system, but more importantly, you can see when this device was last activated, when it was last tested. Obviously, we shouldn't be disabling the device, there should be no reason to, to isolate them, 
but it gives you this uh, compliance information that we very much need. So you can see when the devices were last tested, should they have been tested, or when they were last activated. More importantly, activated by your, your firefighter's toggle switch to, to evacuate the zone. And this is fully, fully recorded, so you have full, full history. Now, one of the, the key points to this software is the categories. So we know how difficult it may be getting access to the, to the flats, listening to the sounders from outside the flats to make sure it, they've operated. So what we do here, if we look back at the devices, this is a, a service tool log that can be shared with your, your colleagues. So you can see this category assignment. Okay, if I create a new category, uh, the new category, this is gonna be uh, room access. A uh, common problem, uh, which would be, is you're unable to, to gain access to the flat. Remember, it's, a, it's their own private flat or apartment. Um, it's a way just to group and filter quite easily um, any, any devices that become problematic. So, unable to gain access to, to flat. Um, it's a bit of a warning, so change the colour, um, give it a, a yellow, a prominent warning. Click OK. And I'm going to create a, a new category. Um, just think of whatever happens on site or what's likely to happen on site. So, um, sounder test issue. Okay. Uh, this one, um, unable to hear sounder outside of flat. Again, following your code of practice, you must be able to, to hear that sounder operating. This is a bit of a warning condition because obviously the sounder doesn't work, then that person can't be safely evacuated. So click OK. There's another category. That's a, a red one. And obviously I can start assigning um, categories to, to devices. Uh, assign a category. Room access. OK. So we've got these categories in the system. I can simply assign a device, assign a category, and I'm going to flag it up test issue. So this means when we're, when we're going to, to sites and we're, we're doing our tests, we pull down this report, we can then customize the report and we, we can view by test issues, we can view by problems with room access, or more importantly, we just view by everything that's being tested. So once you've got your, your service tool report complete and you're happy with the system, obviously there will be a lot more sounders on your, on your system. We can then save the file save it to your server, um, save it as a backup where your colleagues will gain access. One of the features of the service tool is we can save as, save as a, an XLL document or HTML, PDF, whatever you, you feel appropriate. But the Excel document is, is quite commonly used. So this allows you to professionally brand this report to your client. You can show it to the, the building owner. Uh, you can save it to your, to your site. Once you save the system, it will then generate the report in an Excel document, which again can then help you keep track and keep traceability. Once the Excel document is generated, again, it just takes out this service tool program and it converts the, the whole application to Excel. So it allows you then to put more user-friendly notes. You can even start plotting graphs if you want to, to now start predict how many rooms you're gonna to need to get access to and what you need to do on the system. So you can see it's converted the program to, to Excel. You scroll through the program, got your evacuation switches, room access. You can then look through the system, just in a more user-friendly format if, if need be, using a standard Windows application. Obviously, it's an Excel document, so you can put your own company headers in. You can insert lines, insert extra information. The more information you've got, the simpler it is to, to, to show that compliance. I hope this has helped. A basic service tool. Uh, if you have any further queries, don't hesitate to, to contact the tech support team, who again will also happily talk you through this program. This software can be downloaded from the Advanced 360 section of our website.